uplift the lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. Come on, everybody, give God a praise in the temple. Tonight we have a prayer. You know you need the word from the Lord. Lift your hands in this atmosphere and say, Lord, speak to me. Come on, fellowship, help me say, Lord, give us a word. the word. The Our world's in trouble, Lord. Give us a word. The Our families are in trouble, Lord. Give us a word. Surrender ourselves unto you. We say all we need. Just one word. All we need. Just one word. Once you join in with the worship, everybody, lift your hands and say, Lord, give us a word. Come on, let's sing. God, our lives are going to be better when you speak to us. Hallelujah. Our children are coming home when you speak to us. Well, you know it by now. Come on, say all we need. Come on, say it. Say it till you believe it. Just lean on them and say, all we need, all we need. Just, one word. just one word from you. This is what the Lord promised that you would. We know things are getting better for you. Things are getting better for me. Just wave back at me and say, I know that's right. I know that's right. You promised you would. You promised you would heal our land. You got, you got it by now. You got it by now. Come on, lift your hands and say, oh. All just one word. Just one word from you. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, things are getting better. Things are getting better. Things are getting better. Because all we need. One word. Just one word. Come on, stand up on your feet. I need about three more people to stand up on your feet and help me say, You promised you would. Come on, point up the heavens with a sign of victory and say, You promised you would heal my land. Believe it. Come on, say you promised you would. Look at your neighbor and say, I see things are getting better for you. Come on, say all I need is just one word. Just one word. Doesn't matter what the doctor says. Doesn't matter what the lawyer says. But all I need is just one word. Words. 
brothers and my sisters. Praise the Lord, my brothers and my sisters. I introduce to some and present to others the chief apostle of the volume of the book conference, Apostle Vincent L. Smith. And we are both. Hey, Wilma. Wilma. Wilma, any time to turn that, to dial that number, dial that number, Wilma. You know you're late. Get on the phone, Wilma. It's time for Pastor and that voice thing, honey. To get on the phone now. Dial the number. Yeah, the voice, the voice, the voice. <laughs> Welcome everyone. We praise God for you. Eight man on tonight calling in to the voice on this wonderful Tuesday, the last Tuesday of February already. My God, my God. The last Tuesday of February twenty twenty already. When we come back again, We'll be talking to you on a Tuesday night in March. My God. Ain't that, if you think about it, even tomorrow, let's start tomorrow already. I know you're ready. Ain't that for your days of laying things aside. Ain't that and letting God do something wonderful in your life. Ain't that. So let's get ready. At midnight, let begin. And so I want you, eight men that are listening in, determine what you're going to turn over to God for these next 40 days. Eight men and let God do something wonderful in your life. Eight men, I'm grateful tonight, eight men, to have with us, eight men, the elder Ernest E. Richard. Amen. Come on, say something to us, man of God. God bless you all who are listening to us by way of uh, iHeartRadio, Spricker Radio, by way of Spotify, by way of the Google app, as well as YouTube and wherever else you may be listening to us. Apostle, thank you for this opportunity to be part of this great, great, great broadcast. I appreciate it, sir, and we'll do our best not to let you down or not let God down. Amen, amen. We thank God for you, man of God. Amen. Down there in the DMV, we praise mm. God for you. And for those of you that don't know those call letters, he's down there in that Delaware, Maryland, Virginia area. Amen. And we thank God for him. All right. It's my other brother on the line, Apostle Irvin A. Whitlow. All right, I guess he has not made it in just yet, or he's trying to get in, fit in, or something or another. Amen, but he'll be with us shortly. Amen. We want to know if our sister was able to call in tonight. Amen. Is the Apostle Phyllis out of Detroit, Michigan, with us tonight? All right, maybe she will call in as we go along. Amen. Are there any others? Amen. Mr. Kimmy Kim, where are you at tonight? That's the Lord. All right. She must must have her pajamas on already. Hallelujah. All (laughs) right. (laughs) All right. we, We shall get. We shall get going in our lesson tonight. Amen. Uh, Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you tonight because you are good and your mercy endures forever. And there's nobody else like you nowhere. Lord God, not in the heavens or on the earth or beneath the earth, there's no one that can compare. There's no one that can stand near to who you are or what you mean to us in this life. Now, Father, tonight as we make ready 
to enter into thy word. We pray tonight, God, that you will illuminate our mind, give revelation to our spirit, proclamation to our lips. Let us see and hear that from the spirit that we have not seen or heard. For we do understand that the word of God is always pregnant with possibilities. We do understand that the word of God is unexhaustible. We do understand that the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. It is the word that we put in our heart that we might not sin against thee. And so, Lord, let this word reach out, reach out, and reach over and touch somebody's life tonight. And we give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Amen. Let me just check. Amen. Is the Bishop H. Eugene Bellinger on this line? All right. We shall hasten to our lesson for tonight. Once again, callers, we thank you for calling in to this Elation Radio. Amen. Joining us on this broadcast and by every other way that Elder Richard has already mentioned, we pray God bless your life tonight. All right. Uh, on last week, we began a – well, we didn't begin – We moved into a teaching on prayer last week. Uh, We've been talking about prayer for the month of February. But last week we entered into uh, prayer, the secret weapon. Out of Ephesians chapter 6, number 18. And let me preface this before we get going. Amen. I know time after time we have read Ephesians chapter 6, and we talk about the helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, girding ourselves uh, with truth, and shall not be with the preparation of the gospel, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, the shield of faith. Amen. And most times that's where the preacher get happy at and get the hollering and screaming, and we never seem to make it to verse number 18. Verse number 18 told us that we should pray in the Spirit. And I want you to understand that verse number 18 takes us into a secret weapon because verse number 18 is not a piece of armament or weaponry that can be seen, but it definitely can be used. And so tonight, amen, we're going to give you a quick overview, amen, of last week's lesson. We were blessed last week to have on the air with us Apostle Phyllis, a dear, dear friend of mine, and my family. Amen for more than 50 years. She's been a friend of our family. Amen. And she was on with us last week. And Lord knows she laid out some wonderful, wonderful nuggets. Amen about prayer. And Elder Richard is just going to give you a quick overview of our lesson last week so you, he can catch you up. And then we're going right back to Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 18, to give you a little information, and then we're going to go further in our study. Somebody said praise the Lord. All right. Well, Apostle, um, and if you missed, if you weren't there last week, you missed an awesome, and I do mean an awesome teaching that she did. One real quick highlight, I'm not going to – get too, too far into it. She went into several scriptures. One that still stands out in my mind is found in Leviticus 6, 
uh, chapter 6, verse 12, which simply says the fire on the altar must be kept burning. It must not go out. And in relationship to prayer, <clears throat> excuse me, being the secret weapon, she laid out the very fact that we must always, always have an opportunity and chance and make time to be in the presence of Almighty God. We can't remain that city to sit on the hill, that light which cannot be put out if we don't come into the presence of God, if we don't spend the time to communicate with the God of our salvation. We cannot be effective in prayer if we do not take the time to find out what the will of our Father is. We cannot be effective in prayer if we're not willing to spend the time it takes to get command and counsel from Almighty God. The woman of God just touched on so many different bases, and I encourage you to go to the Elation Magazine um, uh, Facebook page as well as the Pastor's Corner to get the entirety of what she shared with us on last week. On this particular week, sir, uh, with your permission, uh, I'm going to read Ephesians uh, chapter 6 and verse 18 in the hearing of the people, and I gather you'll be ready to go forward. Go ahead, sir. All right. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 simply says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Amen. 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 What version was that, sir? That was uh, the NIV version. All right. Let's look at it at the CEV real quick, and then I'm going to start talking. All right. Uh, let me pull up the CEV. Uh, usually I have my... Uh, my uh, uh 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 my yes i got it right here the ceb says on verse 18 uh it says don't get drunk on wine oh wait make sure we got the right one that's ephesians 5 not ephesians 6 <laughs> second <laughs> but don't get drunk on wine anyway anyway did you have a sip before it, you this, got on tonight <laughs> Bless you, sir. <laughs> Offer prayers and petitions in the spirit. Of course, Apostle Whitlow has offered prayers and petitions in the spirit all the time. Stay alert by hanging in there and praying for all believers. All Let right. Me. We want you to we want you to understand tonight that this is part two of prayer, the secret weapon. Amen. As Elder Richard has already said, if you want part one, go to Elation Radio, Pastor's Corner, Amen, and listen at last week's MPC recording, and it will bless your life. Amen. But tonight, uh, it says in the King James Version, for those of you that are old schoolers, it says, Praying always with all prayers and supplications. I want yeah. you to understand tonight, amen, that when it comes to the armament, when it comes to the armor that we are to be dressed in at all times, because people of God, I want you to know we are still in warfare. I know we call this 2020 the year of the devil, the year of the overflow, the year of the miraculous, the year that God is going to do greater things than we've ever seen before. Amen. And I believe all of it, and I expect all of it to happen. But at the same time, don't get so carried away with looking for what God has already promised. Because whatever he promised, he will do. But I want you to understand, we are yet in warfare. Yes. We are yet in a battle, and our opponent is not going to give up just because we're expecting greater. Matter of fact, because we're expecting greater, he's trying to do greater things on his side. Somebody said, why would you use the word greater for the enemy? Because 
because the greater your victory, the greater your battle. And I'm mm-hmm. telling you, he, he, he's going to another level to try to come against us in this hour, and this will not be a teaching to to magnify the enemy because we got some stuff for him tonight. I, I want you to understand, amen, that the enemy goes to another uh, playbook. When God starts talking about doing greater things for us and dropping things that we have never experienced before, believe me, the enemy goes to a different book. And he gets ready with a new game. But I don't care what book he got. All his books are no good for us. And I want you to know tonight that amongst all the weaponry that God has given us, all the armor that he has given us, tonight we will talk about one of the most powerful tools, one of the most powerful amen arsenals, he has given us a man to fight against the enemy. Of course, we know first there is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The word yes. of God is sharp, is powerful, is quicker than any two-edged sword. I, I, we will never negate the strength and power of the word. But the next verse said, a man that prayer should be added to the list. Amen. And a lot of times in teaching and in preaching, this verse has been left out of the armor, but it should be included. Any amen, uh, 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 forgetting of it at all, it should be included every time that we not forget as the people of God that prayer is also a weapon, but I have named it a secret weapon, and we're yeah. going to find out why tonight. First of all, let me say, prayer, amen, in itself has been, has been defined as communication with God. Amen. There is a book out called Conversations with God. Amen. Yeah. Your prayer time with God should be just like talking to your wife or husband, talking to your children. Amen. Prayer is not a difficult thing if you just open up your mouth and give God your heart. Amen. The problem why prayer is difficult for a lot of people because you're too busy trying to pray like the old Dickie you remember. You're trying mm. to pray like old mother. You're trying to pray like the pastor used to pray. God is not looking for any of that in your prayer time. He wants you to open up your mouth and begin to talk to him from your heart. Amen. And he will talk back to you. Amen. Amen. We also want to say, amen, that prayer has no limitation. Amen. Prayer is unlimited in faith. Time, miles, country, whatever. Prayer has no limitation. Amen. Now, also, prayer has no expiration. Our prayer we pray tonight may not be unveiled till two weeks from now. God would have us call out something tonight. And two weeks later, that prayer is answered. That prayer is unfolded. That prayer is revealed, amen, and made tangible. Prayer has no expiration date. Amen. Okay, amen. And so we want you to understand tonight that as we talk about prayer on tonight, we're going to be talking about different ways of communicating with God, and it's all in the scriptures. Okay, hey, guys, Apostle, want to go? Yes. before you go forward, Apostle Whitlow has finally joined us. He's risen from the dead. Well, bless you, Apostle. How you doing tonight? 
Man of God, I'm grateful to the Lord for his goodness, and we thank God for what he's doing. And I'm listening to you, man. You were saying a thing or two or three. Amen. The Lord bless you. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Let's go to the book of Romans, chapter 8. Okay. If you'll be so now, kind. We, 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 we see that Ephesians 6 told us that we should pray in the spirit. Mm-hmm. Now, what does that mean? Pray in the spirit. I know years ago, when the deacon or the church mother would get up and pray, and they pray until they start sweating and, and running all down their face. Oh, Lord, the spirit sure had to pray today. No, you don't pray until you start perspiring. That's all that was. <laughs> that, that didn't have nothing to do with the spirit. That was a good sweat because you have that three-piece suit, amen, with your T-shirt and shirt on. Amen. We didn't have no air conditioning back then. So you prayed until you started perspiring. Amen. The spirit that got nothing to do with how much you sweat. Amen. Mm-hmm. That's right. The spirit can come in and you never sweat. Uh oh. So don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't get all excited about how much you sweat while you were praying. That don't mean the spirit was in charge. Yeah. It could mean you got a chemical imbalance. <laughs> I want you to understand, we got to stop all this old school junk uh, 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 that we think is God. Amen. And we got to get in the word of God and find out what things are and what they really, how they really operate and how they really go. And let's stop fooling ourselves with a bunch of fairy tales and a bunch of stuff, amen, that make no sense for this hour. We should be more mature now. I ain't talking about education. Education is wonderful, but I done met a whole lot of educated fools. With it. <laughs> mm. Excuse me. All right. When it comes to the word of God, I done met a whole lot of educated fools. But I'm talking about we as people of God, we ought to know better what they did back in the day was because it was the best they could do. Yes. We have no excuse now. We should know Mm -hmm. better. We can get in this word and study. We can get in this word and get in our computers and find out what what a word really means and how something really operates. Amen. So let's look at some things tonight. Amen. Three areas we're going to take you into tonight. And God knows we hope we can even deal with all three of these areas in one session tonight. The Mm. first thing we're going to look at tonight is intercession. Mm -hmm. Then the next thing we're going to look at is praying. In an unknown tongue. Okay. Then the third thing we're going to look at tonight is groaning and moaning in the spirit. All right. Okay. Now, in Romans chapter 8, I believe we want to start at about verse, uh, I believe it's 25. Somebody please get that. Okay, Uh, verse 25 from the King James Version, Romans chapter 8 says, But if we hope for that, we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Verse 26, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot... Hold it right there. It says, it says in that 26th verse that likewise the Spirit does what? Help Help us. The Spirit also helpeth our infirmity. The Spirit helps us in prayer. 
I don't know, I said earlier to Apostle Whitlow as we were sort of trying to prepare for tonight, I said, have you ever been in prayer, praying in English, praying with your vocabulary, praying with the, all the recognizance of your mind, and then all of a sudden you run out of words, mm. didn't know where to go, didn't know where else to go in prayer, but you know you hadn't got the breakthrough yet. You know the thing that you had before God. You had not really mm. hit it like you needed to hit it yet. Amen. Hey, you didn't mm. feel no breakthrough. You didn't feel no answer coming. You you knew you had said all you could say, and now you just down there saying, oh, Jesus, Lord, please do it. Oh, Lord, help me. Oh, Lord, your vocabulary has ended, but the answer and the breakthrough still had not happened. Mm. All right. That's okay. why the word tells us tonight, likewise, the spirit, Helping our infirmity. Amen. Now, what is the infirmity? We're not talking about a sickness or a disease. You can be infirmed in your spirit trying to get a breakthrough, and the breakthrough is not happening. It causes a illness in the midst of your prayer time. My goodness. Because you need an answer, you need a breakthrough, you need God to come on and deal with this thing, but your own vocabulary is not getting it done. All right. But it says the Spirit, likewise, help Mm -hmm. him, help him, help him. Mm -hmm. That means at any time, that you need the Spirit's help because that ETH, that is not a one-time thing. Amen. It's not a one-time deal. Help it. That ETH says that it can be a continuous thing. The Spirit is willing to continuously help you in your prayer time. Come on, somebody talk to us. Go ahead, Apostle uh, Whitlow. I, I think you said it best that the Holy Spirit is willing to help you on a continual basis. Holy Spirit doesn't come in, do a one-time job, and say, okay, I did my part, now I'm gone. That's not how the Holy Spirit works. The Holy Spirit is continuously, constantly, consistently there to help you because as long as you are in this flesh, you will have a weakness. That weakness says you do not have the stamina needed to do it on your own. So therefore, the Holy Spirit says, let me step in here and fix your shortcomings. Let me come in here and hook you up because you got got some hang-ups. That's that's just it. The Holy Spirit is interceding, helping you so that your prayer gets where it needs to get and brings you the results you seek. Amen, man. Amen. Amen. All right. Al, do you want to say something? Yes, I'm just going to throw in there. I, I, I like what you both said, and there's no better way to say it than the way you've already said it. You know, the Spirit comes and helps us in those moments of weakness when we're not sure what it is we're trying to say. Um, and I'm going to use something that uh, uh, it's something of an analogy, but I think you'll get the gist of it. Think back to when you first met the love of your life, whoever she might, maybe it was in high school, maybe it's your current wife or whatever the case may be. But think back when you met the love of your life and you're introducing yourself to her for the first time and you're trying to say what's in your heart and what's on your mind, but the words seem to get messed up, seem to get mixed up, seem to get lost in the middle of everything you're trying to say. And technically it sounds like you're babbling and you have no clue what you're trying to say, but they look at you with that assured look like, you know, you ain't sounding good, but I know what you're trying to say. 
Spirit of God is like that for us as he intercedes for us. He's saying, and l- let me talk in language we all understand. Ebonics is not a real language, but I'm going to use it for a minute. If, if I could be the Holy Spirit, which I could never be, it would sound something like this, Lord have mercy. This boy's sitting here trying to tell you, God, that he's hurt and he ain't feeling that good and he just wants you to know that he needs your help. And then God says, yeah, I got him. Don't worry, Holy Spirit. Just let him keep on going. But you know what? I like the very fact that he's actually searching our heart. He already knows what it is we're trying to say, and he's he, he's our translator. He's like a, 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 a if we were in a foreign country and we need a translator to communicate with the people with whom we're trying to talk to. The Holy Spirit is a go-between to translate our heart felt uh, condition to the Father. I think that's I'm going to pass it on over. No. Amen. Lord Jesus. Listen, listen. So it says, likewise, the Spirit helpeth our infirmities. And it goes yes. on to say, for we know not what to pray for as we ought. Wait a minute. Oh. When I got down to pray, I knew what I was praying for. Mm-hmm. Or did I? No. You thought you did. What, well, that's so, what is, so, so what is the text say? Exactly. We know yes. not. We know not what to pray for, as we ought. What is the text really saying? Can I? I'll give my perspective. And before I do that, those of you that wish to join the conversation, six four six five six four nine eight four two. You can call in and give us uh, your perspective on what you think the scripture might be saying, 646-564-9842. For me personally, it's saying when my will may not be lining up with God's will at the time I'm praying, I may have a personal agenda that I'm coming to the throne of grace for, and in that personal agenda, it might be me, us, four, and no more, and God wants me to go above and beyond the four and no more. God wants me to pray for those. He wants me to pray for uh, those who are in authority. He wants me to pray for those who might think they're my enemy or even my frenemy. God wants me to pray according to his will. That's what it says to me. I I want to I want to jump in there for a moment, but uh, I believe we have another caller on with us as well. Um, Amen. So we we don't want to miss that. But I, I want to go a little bit further than that with what you're saying, man of God. Mm-hmm. I believe that one of the things that this text is relating to is the 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 mindset of man, because it says we don't know what to pray for as we ought. In other words, we are constantly asking for things that have no value or um, have no importance to our walk in our life in God. uh, Calling on the name of the Lord and saying, Lord, I need a raise. Calling on the Lord, Lord, I need a car. Calling on the Lord, I need a house. Calling on the Lord, uh, I need somebody to care for me. Calling on the Lord for things like that. Not saying that those things are not important, but those things are really not the real real thing that we should be focused on. So that's why you go into another scripture that says when we pray, right, we pray amiss that we may consume it upon our lust. We're praying for things that we really don't even know what we should be praying for, whereas our prayer should be uh, we want more of his righteousness. We want more of his holiness. We want more of his spirit, more of his wisdom, so that he can reveal himself more, so that we can be more like him. See, but that's not our prayer and our mindset, because unfortunately, we live in this flesh, so we focus on fleshly things. That's what I believe it is. And I'm not talking, taking away from what you're talking about, man of God, but this is just the route that I, this is the way that I see it in the spirit. We're praying for things that has nothing to do with what God is calling us to. As a matter of fact, many things that we ask for, it pulls us away from God. So here's an example. Lord, you give me a wife and I'll serve you. And as soon as you get the wife, you spend more time trying to trying to find out ways to make her happy and make her feel certain kind of ways and do all of this. And then you done forgot that you done told the Lord if he give you the wife that uh, uh, you would do this and that. We see we cannot bargain with God. Help me, God. We cannot bargain Say with that. God that we're going to pray. Amen. 
Yeah, Amen. Well, you know, let, 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 let me just add to that. And, you know, it's funny that you would bring that up because, and I'm I'm just saying from my experience, and I'm sure you gentlemen have experienced the same things when you've gone into counsel with folk and have talked to people and you've gone to pray for them or when they've come to the altar and you ask, what would you have the Lord do for you? And the first thing, uh, tell God to give me more faith or tell, I want to get the Lord to give me a closer walk. Well, you know, there, like you said, there are certain things you don't have to pray for. They, you just have to do. That's your responsibility. The one thing we are required to do is to come boldly to the throne of grace to, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in that time of need. And that's when the Holy Spirit steps in, when we realize and recognize that we have a true-to-life need that God is waiting and willing to supply. Mm. Now, oh, now, as we look at this, as we look at this, that means that we have had <clears throat> several times before God where we were just wasting time. Mm-hmm. Because we got down with a preconceived idea uh huh. That this is the prayer that I need to pray, mm-hmm. and when I pray it, God's gonna move according to what I'm saying. Uh huh. And before we even got on our knees, God was saying that ain't the prayer. Nope. Mm-hmm. But He let us get down on our knees, or He let us walk through the house, or He let us walk through the park, or however we decide to pray. Ain't that? And we got to talking, and that prayer wasn't doing nothing but bouncing from one wall to the other. Amen. Because it was our own preconceived idea of how God was getting ready to work. Mm-hmm. But he mm. said, we know not what to pray for uh-huh. as we ought. So when we get down with our little uh, uh, whatever language we speak, when we get down with our own little prayer and telling God, oh, move like this, move like that, God said, I don't even need to move that way. It's a whole other situation. Amen. Why don't you let me pray and you be quiet? Yeah. Mm. There you go. And when I say, And when I say be quiet, he's talking about your mind. He's talking yeah. about your emotions. He's talking about amen, even your mouth. Sometimes we just need to lay before God until he starts talking. All right. Sometimes we, we, we got so much junk in the way, it's almost hard for the spirit to take over. Mm-hmm. So he said, we don't know what to pray for as we are. He said, but the spirit will do what? Make Interesting. Yeah. For us. Mm-hmm. That means there is a mechanism inside of us that he has already placed in our spirit man that can help us pray a direct prayer while we're wasting our time quoting poems. And quoting and quoting masonry class and quoting this and that and the other. Amen. He said, if you would just rely on the Holy Ghost in you, he said it knows what to pray for. Amen. Now, I want to deal with a few mysteries. I want to deal with a few uh, 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 mistakes here about this expression. Intercession is not just how many levels of tongues you can pray in. That's right. Okay. Because intercession really has nothing to do with levels of tongues. Listen at the word. Intercession. And I'm going to say it again. Say Inter. Session. And notice now, session is not spelt with an S. It's spelt mm-hmm. with a C. Mm-hmm. Really, this word intercession means you become another 
person, situation, or thing at that moment of prayer. Amen. You enter into a that is not you. Amen. Mm. We like to call it standing proxy. All right. Yes. Right. But in the Holy Ghost, as the Holy Ghost prays, amen, we stand proxy in the Spirit. And the Spirit begins to speak out of your being, out of your spirit, man, out of your will. It begins to speak for the situation. All right. And you become the person or situation while you pray in the spirit. Come on, talk to me, Apostle. Well, I, I think you, you're saying this so eloquently that there's really nothing that can be added. It, it's, just, it's just that simple. It, there's nothing to be confused. It is as clear as it can be, and it's a matter of people just have to want it. It's just that simple. Amen? Well, wait a minute now, and maybe it's not that simple because people talk about, oh, I was in intercession, and I saw four stars, and, 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 and a light shined through my window. What does that have to do with intercession? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, well, well, if we be truthful, and I mean no harm, but you do know that we have some people who operate through intellectualism and have no revelation. Um, and, and that is an issue because people think, well, if I'm intellectual because I read a natural definition, then this must be what it is. But we, we, when we rely on the Lord, the Lord shows us things that helps us to better understand. So that's why I said you really made it clear. Intercession is, watch this, intercession is really about what you said, standing proxy, or better yet, becoming that particular individual that you want God to do something for. You're standing in, standing in for that person so that God will do it. Uh, and, and, and so there is really not a lot for someone to uh, uh, miss this unless they unfortunately suffer from being illiterate and and have no kind of understanding in any capacity. Because when you understand intercession, what you're doing, if you will, I like to always say intercession is always um, for those who believe in interception. In other words, I'm getting in the way of this on your behalf so that what God needs to do can be, do, can, can be done. Watch this. The Bible tells us in Revelation 1, and I want to say, uh, I guess it's about maybe 6 or 6, about 6 or 16. It says that we are, a, we are kings and priests. We've been made kings and priests unto our God. Here's what we have to understand about the particular text. What it's relating to is uh, kings relate to lions, priests relate to lambs. Lambs are always for sacrifice. So, which means that if we're going to be intercessors, we're going to have to become the sacrifice, point blank, period. Matter of fact, we, because we've been made priests unto our God, you cannot possibly be a priest unless you are willing to be a sacrifice. Uh, for others unto our God That's why priests they minister to God And so in our ministering to God We become a sacrifice For other folk That other folk don't have to go through The same thing Amen so, Amen. To, to back that up in scripture When you look in the gospel of John The 17th chapter In his uh, uh, intercession In the garden and I know that the writer of Hebrews says that he offered up prayers with strong crying and supplication, but there was a point in his prayers when he interceded for the body of Christ, which was newly formulated or about to be formulated at his resurrection. And one of his <clears throat> excuse me, main prayers was that they would be one as he, Jesus, and the Father were one. So when you're talking about that intercessor being an interceptor, we have to go before the Father on behalf of other people to intercept 
whatever it is they may be going through. Maybe they're dealing with sickness. Maybe they're dealing with some type of financial situation. And here on the face of this earth in our physicalness or in our human form, we have certain things we have to deal with. And some of it is overwhelming to others of us. I shared something with Apostle Smith earlier this afternoon, uh, and I'll talk to you guys about it off the air. There's some intercession that has to be done because there are spirits out there that are attacking our young people, causing them to want to have suicidal spirits and attacking some of our young adults who are, you know, living in the in the free sex age or trying to relive the the free sex world, and even our older adults, dementia is an attack of a spirit. They call it a disease, but that's a spiritual attack, and we have to intercede on behalf of these people. Proverbs even teaches us to open our mouth for the dumb and those who are not able to fight for their own cause. This is our responsibility when we talk about intercession. Mm. Wow. Wow. I like what you said, uh, Apostle Whitlow, uh, that actually we are the stand-in for that person or for that situation. We become the stand-in. We don't Mm -hmm. realize that that's why I know a lot of people don't know what they're talking about when they're talking about I'm an intercessor. Just because you pray at the beginning of service, don't make you an intercessor. Amen. Mm-hmm. That's you right. Might be a good, you might be a good prayer warrior and can really, amen, stir up the atmosphere. Amen. You might be a, a person that makes tremendous power available, but that don't make you an intercessor. It makes you nope. a prayer warrior that you amen. can pray until the heavens respond. Amen. And it's the the atmosphere is conducive for the work of God. But when Amen. we start talking about intercession, we're, we're actually just to take it a step further or a word further, we're talking about an act of warfare. Uh-huh. That's really what intercession is. It is an act of warfare. And, and I know watching spy movies and and, and, and all that kind of stuff. We know uh, at times in a spy movie, they will trade off one spy for another because it's of a greater collateral. Mm-hmm. And this is what happens in intercession. Amen. You walk in in, in, in the spirit. You walk in and you take the place of the one that's trying to be held hostage. But in prayer, you now become the one in hostage, and you pray until both of you are set free. Now, when you're yeah. set free, you know they're free. Mm-hmm. And then God Amen. will then begin to bring you down out the spirit, amen, and you're going to a praise. But I want you to understand, people of God, amen, and let me say this, just because in prayer you speak in tongues a little bit does not make you an intercessor. No, it That's does right. not. That's right. No, that it means does. You, your, that means your spirit man got excited and you gave God praise in tongues. Amen. Mm-hmm. Because right. most times in it most times in intercession, when you go into intercession, God will most times actually show you who you're standing in for. Amen. Yes, yes he will. And as you begin to pray, you sometimes you don't even know the situation, but you can see the person's face. Amen. Now, God will walk uh, you. God will walk you around that house sometimes because the problem's yeah. in the house. Amen. He'll walk you through that job because the job, because the problem is on the job. God will give you visual aid at the time of intercession because he he wants you to know what you're warned for. Amen. 
For all of y'all out here talking about your intercessor, amen, and, and, and you, 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 you ain't doing nothing but having a good time talking in tongues, I advise you tonight to stop saying that you're an intercessor because you're not standing in no, you're not standing out there for anybody. You're just having a good time at prayer time. Amen. Amen. Come on. I know you don't like me, but you're going to love me before you go to hell. I want you to understand that, <laughs> that, that, that I have no time. I have no time to come on the air and give you fluff. I have no time to get on the air and pat your back and tell it's going to be all right. No, we are too close to the end for us to be meandering our way in the body of Christ now. You need to get off the milk, throw the pampers in the trash, take your pacifier and burn it, and come on and let's do the things of God the way it ought to be. Amen. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, did I, I say that? Yeah, you did say that. If I may have a moment to break in here. I don't know if the call is still on. The line, uh, area code 407, are you still with us? 407, are you still with us? Please identify yourself. It's all right. Okay, well, we'll move forward. Uh, they don't want to identify all right, yourself. Well. Keep on listening. We hope we're, you're enjoying the broadcast. Amen. Amen. All right. So uh, uh, we 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 know it says so it says that it would uh, go into intercession for us in that 26th verse of Romans chapter eight. Amen. The Spirit will take us into intercession. Amen. Now, if we go back. To Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, we see that the statement of Romans chapter 8, 26, and Ephesians 6 and 18, amen, coincide and correlate with each other because the theme of, of Ephesians 6 tells us that when we get in the spirit and pray, that this kind of prayer should be for the saints. Amen. It, it, it should be that while we're in the spirit, praying in tongues, that the prayer that we're praying should be to benefit another child of God. Amen. Well, mm. did anybody see it besides me? Amen. Is that that this prayer should be done for the saints. Amen. And that's why I don't understand in the body of Christ, why are we going through so much as the saints, as the children of God, if we're supposed to have intercessors in the body? All right. The wow. intercessors, uh-oh, here go another revelation. The intercessors is like the old rabbit ears we used to have on the TV. It's safe to be picking up the signal that something is out there that ain't right. Come well, on. Apostle, Apostle, is it possible that many believers are suffering from a lost signal uh, because of Uh-oh. all the static? They have static in their life because they are not as connected to God as they were at some point in time before. Because Amen. the Bible says something very interesting uh, to me in Romans 12 and 2. It says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may uh-huh. prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Could it be that people have literally tuned God out because they wanted to stay in tune with the world? And having stayed in tune with the world, they have lost their signal with God to know who to stand in for. Well, can I add to what you've already said, Apostle Whitlow? Is it possible that they're so busy listening to the clamor and the noise of the world that they cannot hear that still small voice? that whisper that speaks directly to the heart, is that possible? 
I mean, I like what you said because, yeah, maybe they lost their signal. Because they lost their signal, and this has happened to us as men of God, we've gotten on the phone and had conversations, and one of us would drop off. I'm not saying that we've lost our signal in that respect, but the, the analogy is pretty simple. I mean, the truth is God is looking to for us to be with him last step the way it was with Adam before the fall, and yet we seem to detour from time to time do our own thing and go our own way. Next thing you know, you know, you're breaking up. You're breaking up. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be funny, but the truth of the matter is that's what it, that's what it seems like sometimes for a lot of us. And what we thought, God said go left, and we thought God said go left, go west. You go left. God said go left, and you thought you heard go west, so you went west instead of left. Well, but, but let me well, let me take that let me take that to another place also, mm-hmm. because here's here's a major problem that's been in the body for a little while, and, and we really don't seem to deal with it enough. People get an anointing in their life, and then you can't tell them nothing. Oh, mm-hmm. you didn't just say that. You didn't just say that. Yes, he did. Then, then you can't tell them nothing. They forgot, they forgot that they got the intercession anointing by coming to prayer. But now I mm-hmm. got this anointing. I don't need to come to prayer because I'm anointed now. But you know why that uh, is, right, Apostle? You know why that is? Go ahead. Because, because they came across the scripture in, in 1 John, the fifth chapter, that says you have the anointing so you have no need that anyone should teach you. Ah, students now becoming teachers with no kind of degree, huh? Okay, okay, that's what it is. Well, I, but, but I don't, I don't <laughs> understand. I don't understand. But see, if, if they if they would go back and check the scriptures again, they'll find in Corinthians that you have a whole lot of instructors for a few fathers. Oh, okay. See, okay. That's, that's the so, problem. That, you, you've been. A lot of these folks just dealing with any and everybody that's giving them information, but a father will walk you through it. And that's what a father would do. That that's what a father would do. A, fa- a father will walk you through. You said it right, but but here's the thing: the problem is that again, a lot of these people, and I have to say it, a lot of these people are cotton picking bastards. They haven't been birthed out. What they did is they got up and did their own thing. The Lord called me. That's why you have these people who today, oh, the Lord called me as a deacon. But three weeks later, the Lord called me as an apostle. Then two weeks later, the Lord wants me to be a bishop. The next week, oh, God said, I'm a prophet. See, these are the people, this is what I'm talking about, a lost signal, because they misread the scripture. Because the scripture says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And they read it and thought it said, by the removing of your mind. <laughs> Lord, Jesus, help us, Lord. <laughs> but but listen not... at this. Listen at this. How can you work a gift that you don't maintain? Exactly. You can't intercession I... because intercession is a secret weapon in the midst of God's people. And to tell you the truth, to be an intercessor, you don't even have to be loud. You don't you don't have to run to the altar. You can intercede and sit right in your chair and talk to God about a situation. Amen. And nobody and nobody even gotta hear you. Amen. See, what we have done in the body of Christ is that we have let too many people get away thinking that these important gifts, even though they may not be as much in the limelight as another gift, but we have made people feel like what you got ain't nothing because you don't get up here. Mm -hmm. Come on. But I I Um, read in the... I read in the Japanese Bible, it says that every member is needed. Amen. 
Amen. Mm. When you talk about the working within the body of Christ, it says every member mm-hmm. is needed. Even yes. the members that can't be seen, even the members that are small and minute, is that it all works together. Amen. So, so just as much as we have the fivefold of Ephesians four, we need the intercessor, we need the prayer warrior, we need the armor bearer. We have all pieces work together. Amen. And if we would stop trying to make light. This gift here is greater than that one, and this one is greater than the other one, and you ain't up but a little peon over there. Now go somewhere and sit down. Well, mm-hmm. tell you the truth, we all could be peed on. I mean, peons, hallelujah. Okay. I agree. If you're not careful, if you're not careful, because the real truth of the matter is, without Christ, I am nothing. That yeah. is the truth. That's the bottom line. And you know what? I like how. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, I was going to say, I like how Paul said, even to the Galatians in Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Therefore, mm-hmm. I live. Yet it is not I, but it's Christ who lives in me. When we become God inside minded and Christ centered, when it comes time for intercession, we won't have time to stick our little bird chest out because it ain't nothing we're doing that's so great. That's a requirement. Right there in Ephesians six eighteen, praying with all manner of prayer and supplication for all things. Mm-hmm. That's a requirement. That is not, you know, this ain't a take it or leave it situation. We are in a warfare, as you said earlier in the show. We are in warfare. The enemy don't play fair. The devil keeps. Do you think he's going to sit there and knock on your door? Uh, excuse me, Apostle Vincent Smith, this is the devil knocking. I just want you to know I'll be messing with you today. He ain't doing nothing <laughs> like that. Right. That's not going to happen. He's coming after you. He does his job. He comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And the weapon, the secret weapon we have, the secret weapon of prayer, the secret weapon of intercession in prayer is all we have to fight with. We talked about it last week and the week before about the weapons of our warfare not being calm, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Stronghold. You can't pull yes. down a stronghold just say, now you go away, devil. You just go away. You stop bothering me. Man, please. Anyway, let me stop. Let, 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 me, let me show you uh, uh, just so we can help somebody that's listening in, let me let me show you how powerful intercession works. Yes. I had a cousin got deadly ill in North Carolina. Uh-huh. And she was living up here when she was down there visiting. And she got mm-hmm. deadly ill and was in the hospital. And it didn't look like she was going to make it out. Mm-hmm. My father and mother... And some other saints were here in New Haven. And they decided, let's get together and pray for them. So Amen. They went, to somebody, they, get, they went to somebody's house, and they got to pray. And the anointing of intercession came in the room. And while they were praying, the whole group, while they were praying, they can mm-hmm. see her in the hospital in North Carolina. Oh my God. She was in the she was in the bed in North Carolina about to die, but she was praying in the bed and God took her up in the spirit of intercession and she could see them in New Haven praying for her. Wow. Bless God. Amen. God raised that woman up. And she's still living in New Haven today, preaching the gospel and going forth with power. Don't tell Amen. me. That's why I'm telling you tonight, the prayer of intercession is too powerful, and I'm tired of people joking around with it. The prayer of intercession can save somebody's life. It can turn a situation around. I have heard of people going into intercession and God stopped people from killing themselves. Amen. 
Amen. True. Amen. True. Let's go. Can we go one uh, more apostle? We and this is what we're missing. missing. This is what, oh, my God, tears about to come to my eyes. This is what we're right. missing in the, in the church. We're missing this because if we had true intercessors in the church, then our churches wouldn't be busting up. If we had true intercessions in the church, then the, the pastors wouldn't be under such attack. They would be blowing their own brains out. And all this, if we had real intercessors in the church, a whole lot of stuff would be blocked because the Lord would use them to block it. I'm sorry, hey. Doctor, go ahead. Let, no, no, no. My spirit just, man is stirred up now. I'm just let, looking at. Let me uh, say. Go ahead. Let me let me say this real quick. I think it stems from something that you said a little while ago, Apostle. You said that when people, the moment they get anointed, they feel they don't have to do any more. But I discovered this, that no one in the military service gets a weapon to go to battle until they have been through basic training. And every so often, they have a test to make sure what they learned is still in place. There is a problem in today's assembly that unfortunately many of these pastors do not require people to come to prayer meetings. They do not require them to come to Bible study, and yet then they want to put them in leadership. Now, I'm different because of the way I was raised in ministry. We could uh-huh. read it. We had nothing to say about anything uh, when we did not, when we were not a part of the leadership meeting, or we weren't a part of Sunday school or Bible study or prayer meeting. Those things, and um, let me go here. And we had to be tithers because if we weren't partakers of any of those things, we we were told that we're not equipped and we're not going to do anything until we get in order. So what I'm saying is that the reason we don't have intercessors in place like that is because people come in, and as soon as they feel that they got something on their life, they feel that they don't have to come no more. They don't want to go through basic training. They've got to go through – They come on, they got to go through basic training. Say it. that simple? Say it. And I, I agree. agree. I agree. Yeah. No, and so, I agree. So in the you, sense, you, can't, you can't even – you can't even get a job at McDonald's without going through well, training. That's right. Okay. That's exactly right. So then and it's safe to say it's safe to say that the reason we don't have intercessors in in proper place is because pastors have been sleeping on the job. Because and, watch this. There is nowhere in scripture and if y'all get mad at me, y'all get mad at me. But there is nowhere in scripture that Bible tells us we're supposed to get members in the church. The Bible tells us that we are to make disciples of all nations. That's the word. Right. Right. That's what the Bible says. It says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, uh, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you along with you, even always, even until the end of the age. What, what that, so, so what God is saying is what I require of you is to go out and teach them the right thing so that they'll do the right thing and we will see mm-hmm. the right thing. But we're not seeing the right thing because people are not being taught the right thing, so that's why they're not doing the right thing. Okay, well, let me back up a little bit. Let me back up just a little bit. See, you mentioned something where you have leaders who require you to show up to Bible study. You have leaders who require you to show up for prayer service. You have leaders who require you to tithe, and you have situations where the leaders aren't doing what they're requiring you to do. It's as if they're saying, do as I say do and not as I do. In order for mm-hmm. you to be effective, you have to set the example there's a difference between a boss who cracks a whip and a servant leader who gets in the trenches and pulls with the people. Big difference. Mm-hmm. Come and, on. And let me say, let, let me also say to you that I think one of the biggest problems is is when a leader knows that there are anointed persons, 
within mm-hmm. their congregation. And yep. this cash let them go forth. Mm. They're afraid to let don't, them go forth. You're right. Yeah, they, 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 get, they get afraid to let them go forth. And instead of let them go forth, they rather sit on them than let them bless the church and take it to another level. Mm. Well, you know, I mean, we, we so, selfishness is not a virtue. We all know that. So, so you know, that there's a lot, there's a lot that goes in to why certain uh, facets of uh, of the work of God is not being done. But I, I, I want I want us to understand tonight that are listening in, uh, everything that you hear. We are not against the church. We're just tired of the way things are happening. Yeah. Amen. Because we need, we need every piece of archery that we can get in the church at this hour. We need everything that God intends the church to operate with, amen, for us to go ahead and operate, and operate with it, amen. It, it's just like... Uh, it's just like one time my brother called himself going to make us a homemade cake, and he got to making the thing, and then <laughs> he looked around, he realized he didn't have no vanilla extract. And then he kept making the thing, he realized he didn't have this, he didn't have that, and so he just took what he had because it was too late. He had already started putting it together. He took what he had, threw it in the oven, when it came out, it came out looking like a pancake. And so we had no better sense. We put your crazy kids. We took it and cut it up, put some syrup on it, and, and went to town. But what I'm saying is there are some missing ingredients mm. in our churches nowadays, and that's why we ain't having nothing but fat service. Yeah. Uh, There's no real move of God. There's no no presence of God. That there, there, there's no flow of God. All there is is a service. Mm. My God. And I agree with everything we said on here tonight. But I, I I'm telling you, and I, y'all don't never hear me say this. But as a chief apostle in the body of Christ, and I know people tease about. Us saying chief apostle nowadays, but even Paul said, I am chief apostle amongst the apostles. He said it in scripture. I, I say as a chief, amen, over that that God has given me to work with. I am sick and tired of just gathering and not seeing what God has put in the body be in full manifestation when we come mm-hmm. together. Amen. Yes. And we need to get flesh, we need to get flesh and ego out the way. Amen. Mm-hmm. And this is why tonight we're talking about intercession. We get ready yes. to talk about praying in an unknown tongue. Amen. Because these are some of the components that will make us go to another level in our ministry. If we would let it go in our ministry. Amen. And I also Amen. agree with Apostle Whitlow in his statement. If we would get the teaching and training folks how to flow, how to move, how to operate, amen, and let's stop being scared. There's no such thing, amen, as the Baptist church, the Methodist church, Amen. The church of God in Christ, the church by the way, over the way, that knew the way, came back to the way, left the way, found the way again. There's no such church. Mm. There ain't but one church. And Jesus said, upon this rock, Uh I will build my church. Oh, okay. And the gates of hell shall not be held against it. That's right. They for one church. And in that one. one church, he has gifted the church. Mm-hmm. He said, what is it? 
but that he ascended and descended and ascended again and then gave uh, gifts unto me. That's it. And he gave and not some. Just, and, it's, and it's not just stated in Ephesians 4. It's in the book of Psalms before there was ever a book of Ephesians. That's exactly right. So the gifts and, were always meant to be in the church. Every last gift, not just the five. We keep talking about the five fold. In the book, there are some 25, 29 gifts listed in the Bible, and we don't see half of them in operation. We're mm-hmm. too busy trying That's to- right. Apostle, we're too busy trying to smother them. There are denominations, and like you said, there's only one church, but there are denominations that are trying to say that the apostles' era has come and gone, left with Paul and Peter in the gang, when the truth of the matter is they were the ones who opened up the book of Acts. So if the apostles' ministry is gone, that means the book of Acts is finished. As far as I can tell, oh. it's still going on. It's still here, unless the rapture happened while I was asleep last night. Well, you know what I say to that foolishness? And it is no foolishness. And I don't have time to teach that tonight, but maybe I'll get into it at a later time. If all the apostles are dead, then what are we going to do with Tyrannus, who had the school of apostles right in the Bible? Mm. Well, what are we going to do? What are we going to do with Paul? What are we going to do with Barnabas? What are we going to do with? Oh, I, I, what are we going to do with John Mark? I, I can go on and on. There are apostles. What are we going to do with the women who who Paul himself said, these are my co-laborers? That's yeah. right. And this, is, them- and this is all after. This is all after the 12. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And listen, Come I'm on. not just at all. I'm just simply saying we've got these individuals out there and certain denominations. I'm not going to start naming them, but. When you, A, number one, say women are not supposed to be preachers and the apostles are all dead, well, you know, that tells me right then and there that you just limited yourself and there's an unlimited God waiting to put the limits, take the limits off of you. Now, I only brought it up for that particular reason. If we are going to learn how to be strong intercessors, we have to receive and accept the words the way it is. The grace age has yeah. not closed. And as long as the grace age is open, there are going to be intercessors. There are going to be apostles and prophets, uh, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. There are going to be bishops and overseers because it's just part of the work of the body. The whole bottom line mm-hmm. is simply this. Whether you're in the fivefold ministry or you're in laity, you have a responsibility to lay before the Lord on behalf of other people that their success might be, become prevalent in the presence of an otherwise chaotic world. That's all I'm yeah. saying. But, but, yeah. but let, me, let, me, let me share this. Now, here's a good English word for everybody listening to go look up. Uh-huh. The, problem, the problem in the church is their ass backwards. Yeah, say that. Mm-hmm. And it is an English word. No, I did not just come. Go look in your nope. dictionary. Okay. I have that one, and, and I'm going to explain that to you. How can you say a woman is not called to preach, and it was your mama that led you to Jesus? Thank mm. you. She it preached okay. to you until you received Jesus, but a woman ain't called to preach. And then again, we can do you. How, how, how are there no apostles? How are there no apostles? But the apostles are the foundation of the church. Right. Come on now. If you if you remove the apostles and prophets away from you the re- church, then the church crumbles because Jesus himself was an apostle. Uh-oh. Amen. He said the church Amen. crumbles without the apostles. Mm-hmm. I agree. They need to get they need to get this word. Until they get an understanding. All right, y'all don't just be able to do a whole other study. No, let, let, no, me, gonna... let, let's get back to this. Let's get back to the intercessors. Well, I was going to add one more thing to the intercessors. Let's 
keep in mind, one of the apostles that you already mentioned, Peter, they had to intercede for him when they came and put him in prison. And in the midst of their, they interceded to the place and point that Peter, the angels came, walked Peter through the gate, right through the wall, and goes up to the door, knocks on the door, and a young lady by the name of Rhoda goes and answers the door and sees Peter there, and she can't believe he's there. I'm not even understanding the way the story goes. This sister so couldn't believe that Peter was at the door that she left Peter at the door and went back and told the others that Peter was at the door. And they said, y'all, quit playing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's in yeah. a place that we expect. I like that song we used to sing a year, years ago from the Clark sisters. I'm looking for a miracle. I expect yeah. the intangible. I see the intangible. I mean, I see the invisible. I feel the intangible. We have to come back to that place. Intercessory prayer takes you to a place that your natural mind can't understand, neither can the ears, can your eyes believe, even in seeing it. We got to come back to that place. And it all starts, like you said, it's based in faith, faith in the word of God, faith in the will of God, faith in the way of God, trusting God for everything that we have need of and allowing the Holy Spirit to proceed on our behalf that when we are not able to really from our naturalness uh, comprehend what it is we're praying about, the Holy Spirit takes us to the beyond to get out what we're trying to bring forth. Mm. Now, now watch this. Here, here's another place I want to go for intercession, and then we must get into praying in an unknown tongue. It says in the, te- in the scriptures, in the epistles, it says that Jesus Makes intercession for us. Mm-hmm. Now watch this now. Important and how powerful that intercession is. That Jesus Himself is an intercessor. That's yes. right. And we can prove that through Scripture, because He said to Peter, "Satan desired to have you, that he might mm-hmm. sift you like wheat." He said, but yeah. Peter, I prayed for you. Pray for you. That's what he said. That your faith fell not. Yeah. He said, Peter, yeah. I got in between you and what Satan was trying to do. He said, and I pray that you stay faithful. Amen. Wow. And Amen. God is so, he is so concerned about us. Until he's interceding for us. Mm-hmm. Yes, he is. That's right. And yes, this is he why is. I say tonight, my heart, I'm telling you, my heart is heavy. I feel like just crying and really just going into this thing in a short enough way. Amen. But I'm trying to hang in with the discussion. But I want y'all to understand that tonight, this ministry, and that's what I'm calling it. This ministry called intercession is so important, and we need to get it back in our churches, in our places of worship, and even in our private lives. It is so important. It is so vital to what God want to do right now in the midst of us until I declare, I speak tonight that the spirit of intercession wakes that up in every intercessor that God will set fire to their spirit. Lord, y'all tell me to calm my y'all tell me to calm my black self down. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Not tonight. Now let's oh, look at this praying. Praying in an unknown tongue. Uh-huh. Amen. Find that scripture for us while I talk a little bit. Praying in an unknown tongue. Now, let's remember now we said intercession was when the spirit man takes over in your prayer time and becomes a, another situation. You become another situation in prayer. You stand in for that person's situation, condition or whatever it may be, and God will send the breakthrough through you for that person. 
Mm-hmm. But then there's another level of prayer that talks about when we pray in an unknown tongue. Anybody have it? I believe it's First Corinthians chapter 14, somewhere in and there. Four. Yeah, 14, 14. All right. Read it. It says, for if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit <laughs> by the Holy Spirit within me prays, but my mind is unproductive. It bears no fruit and helps nobody. That's Hold right. it right there. Hold it right there. Now we see already through the scripture that intercession and praying in unknown tongues are two distinct ministries. Mm-hmm. They are not one in the self same. In the session, you stand in for somebody, praying in an unknown tongue. The Bible says your spirit man has taken total control and has All gone right. to a place and has gone to a place Beyond your vocabulary and your understanding and your whole total being is unfruitful, the spirit man has gone on a journey. Mm-hmm. In, in an unknown tongue, is still speaking in a language, but it is not one of the languages, amen, that come when you get the Holy Ghost. It's not one of the languages. Amen from intercession. Unknown tongue says you leave out of your out of your natural realm and you uh-huh. go straight in the spirit to a place that is unknown to your mind, to your body, to your surroundings. You tap into heaven in a way, amen, that nothing earthly can tap in. And I got good news for you. When you pray in an unknown tongue, Satan is dumb too. That's mm. exactly right. He has no clue. That's it. He has no clue. I need you to know tonight there are these are the secret weapons that we are missing in the body and we need these kind of prayers to wake back up. Amen. You can pick up all kind of books. Smith Wigglesworth, Killen Hagen, Amen, and the list goes on and on. They had prayer. They had people of prayer back in that mm-hmm. day. That's why they were able to do miracles. That's why great things happened in their ministry. They had prayer people in their ministry, mm-hmm. intercessors, those that made an unknown song. Mm-hmm. Even Jake and Noel Jones today. It. Huh? Even T.D. Jakes, Noel Jones, and people of that caliber have intercessors today. You better right. believe it. They're not doing great things because they got a good name. Somebody got That's to right. pray them right. You're talking right. Amen. So when we pray, is that when we pray in an unknown tongue? I, I like the way the King James put it. It said our understanding is unfruitful. Which means mm-hmm. that there's no that there's no uh uh the brain can't even produce at that moment. Right. It's non productive. Yeah, once you to... allow your spirit once you allow your spirit man to go beyond the border and into the heavenlies, your brain becomes non productive. Mm-hmm. Somebody talk to me about that. Mm. No, what you're saying, so, I mean, look, the bottom line is you're not, we're, we're, we are carnal beings. All right, we are three-dimensional beings. We're, we're consist of spirit, soul, and body. And too many times we try to live according to the body, not allowing the spirit to do what he has the ability to do. And our soul is so busy trying to interpret spiritual things, having been so accustomed to doing physical things, meaning in terms of what the body is used to, the comprehension is hard to understand. Now, 
pray in an unknown tongue. I mean, the bottom line is we're, we're speaking our heavenly language in most peace, in most cases, but at the same time, God sometimes, and I have to say this, sometimes God will allow you to speak in a language that only those natives that know that language would be able to understand. You have no clue what's going on. As long as you stay in the spirit, you continue to speak. But when with your mind you try to comprehend, now you've gone. i got to use your word again, Apostle Whitlow. Now you have just disconnected from the spirit. That's okay. pretty much what happens. Your mind is unfruitful. As yeah. long as you're in the spirit, you are connected. But the minute you come into the carnality of your mind, you've just disconnected. Your, your mind's mm-hmm. unfruitful. You know, and God will sometimes do that allow you to speak in another tongue. And, you know, we hear people practicing their tongues. Okay, you know, if that's what you have to do, you know, I'm not going to jump on that because that's a whole other subject all by itself. But the bottom line is simply this. There are points in time God will allow you to be in a place that you ordinarily would not be in. I said this before and I'll say it again. When are we going to learn to allow God's super to connect with our natural so that we really walk in the supernatural. When? Well, Rick, that, 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 that piece you, you just brought in, that really goes on the tongues and interpretation that God I will allow you to speak. Huh? I understand, but I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's a base introduction that kind of coincides with both of them if you look at it. Yeah, it goes in the tongues and interpretation. Uh, where God will allow you to speak, you know, that's, well, that's just like that's just like the day, of, uh, the day uh, 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 when the Holy Ghost uh, came, when the Holy uh-huh. Ghost fell, when they came mm-hmm. out of that room into the streets, the people said, "We hear these men speaking our own language." Mm. Yeah, and they, yeah, you're right. At, what I'm saying at you, that you, moment, yeah. at that moment, the Holy Ghost begin to speak and minister to them, and they heard them speaking to them in their own language, and the Bible said, and they understood them. And the people listening understood them. But, I mean, I'm let, let's, uh, the point is right there, Apostle, was if for those individuals who start out in the spirit, of course, when you try to interpret with your mind, that's when you pull yourself out of where God wants you to be. I, I you yeah. know, I took Spanish school, but <laughs> ask me to speak Spanish. Don't waste your time. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> you know, I mean, my point is, you, you, there are times when the Spirit of God will allow you to speak, and and I know it goes under the interpretation of tongues. But my point is, it's like Paul is saying right here in this particular scripture. You know, if I'm speaking, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit is praying. It's not my natural mind praying. It's not my natural understanding. It is not anything that has anything to do with my humanism. It is my spirit that's doing the praying at this present point in time. That's all. And and, and, and the thing about it is, the thing about it is, is that the spirit at this moment in a in a in a moment of unknown tongue uh-huh. the spirit man has total control. Amen. In intercession the spirit is using you, but your understanding or your natural man is yet away. Mm-hmm. But when we get when we get to a place of praying, or I, let me put it like this: when we get so lost in the spirit of God uh-huh. that it takes us into an unknown tongue, our total being is shut down, and the spirit is totally turned on. Mm-hmm. Amen. There's nothing. There's nothing in charge in that moment but the Spirit. Amen. Now, here's what we need to understand. That verse said, pray in an unknown tongue. Matter of fact, read it again, but there was something there I heard that I wanted to put before everybody. Is there any particular version you want, uh, international? No, no. Just, 
Just, just read the game from wherever you read it from. All right, I just mm. read from the James, and the King James in verse 14 says, For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit uh-huh. prays. My spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. Okay, if I'm praying in an unknown tongue, that is my spirit. That means, yes. amen, a lot of times when we go into an unknown tongue, you haven't even, you you yourself haven't even said nothing. Amen. There are times where your, 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 your own speech don't even get a chance to say nothing. The spirit just grabs you and go to talking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if y'all ever had the experience of waking up in the morning and you already speaking in tongues. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I have Actually, woken up many times. I, I, I'm awake in many mornings, and the Spirit was already praying in a heavenly language, and there was nothing I could do, amen, but get with it, because the Spirit was already gone. Mm-hmm. And whatever the Spirit was dealing with, I had to succumb to it. I had to humble myself to it, because whatever the Spirit was doing, was beyond me because the spirit was already praying when I woke up. Amen. I'm about when, the, when the physical me woke up, the spirit was already praying. Amen. So what was I to do but to get with what the spirit was doing and let the spirit finish his job? My spirit yeah. man was praying. And I and let me tell you something, when your spirit man gets to praying, let it do what it's doing because it's doing it for your benefit. We're going to see that in a minute. Come on, read. All right. Uh, verse 14. Uh, that was verse 14. Do you want to go further? Let's go. All right. Verse 15. What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will uh-huh. sing spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. All right, hold it right there. It okay. says we're going to pray in the spirit and pray with understanding. That means mm-hmm. even though you're praying in an unknown tongue, it does not suggest that you stay in that unknown tongue without finding what it was about. Amen. We're going to discover that as we go in this scripture further. It, it says, hey, man, I'm going to pray in the spirit, but I'm also going to pray with understanding. You didn't start talking about singing in the spirit. Now, we ran into that a couple of weeks ago. Hey, man, uh-huh. you, you that are married, sing in the spirit. And so uh, we, we find that we can sing in the spirit. That is also a form of... Of, of, of praying in tongues. Sometimes the uh-huh. Spirit will come and give you spontaneity song. You'll sing in a heavenly language. Amen. That is also unknown tongues. You'll pray, you, you, you'll be praying, but it'll come to you like a song. Amen. Mm-hmm. And, and, and when that song is through, then you ought to wait before God until you get an understanding of what you just sung. So that's yeah, what amen. Verse, so that's what the verse is saying. Pray in your unknown tongue, but wait before God for understanding because the unknown tongue is going to benefit you. The praying and singing in the spirit is going to benefit you. So if you come out of the spirit and just get up and go about your business, you don't miss what the real deal was about. Okay. It amen. wasn't just an experience. In tongues, there was something going on in the spirit realm that was getting you ready for something greater. Come on, read it. It's in there. All right. Verse 15. Okay. Verse 16. Else when thou shalt bless with the spirit, how shall he that occupieth the room of the unlearned say amen at thy giving of thanks, seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest? Yeah. 
Now, Pastor Whitlow, I hate uh-huh. to do it to you. I hate to okay. do it to you. But I'm going to throw that verse at you because we got a lot of folks in church that want to make noise at the wrong time. Oh, Lord. Uh, well, the, the, the issue is that a lot of people want to be seen. A lot of people want to be heard. Uh, mm-hmm. But a lot of people don't want to operate with clarity and with understanding. The Bible makes mm-hmm. some things very clear. The Bible makes some things very clear. So people, some people just want to be seen and just want to be heard. And then the thing about it is, I, can, I, I want to say this so bad. I, I want to say it. Just please give me permission to say this. Please give me permission to say this part. All of that, la, 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 T T T T T da, 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 da. That's not speaking in no tongue. That ain't even no, praying in no tongue. tongue. That is cotton picking chanting. I don't care what nobody say. That is chanting. Uh, yeah, yeah, oi, 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 oi. What you talking about, oi, 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 for? You ain't, you Chinese now? Uh, then you want to start saying some stuff. You ain't got a nam ye, he, he, nam ye, oh, he, he. What the world is you? Get out of here. That ain't, and, and you making all that noise? Go somewhere, sit down. That ain't no, no, that ain't God. I'm sorry. That, 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 that ain't God. People messed up. And they got people confused. Because you got people up there saying, oh, listen to God. Oh, God is using that individual. Oh, God is using that. No, no, that ain't God using nobody. That's somebody who's confused about what God requires, what God says in his word. I believe it right there. But, 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 even, but even at that, I'm not going to let you leave it there. But even, even at that, <laughs> even the scripture says, even the scripture says, when the spirit is in operation, at a time when they ought to be quiet, they're yelling, amen, amen, and don't even know what God is doing or saying. So why is that noise at all? Again, amen. people, we, we deal amen. with an ignorant people. We deal with an amen. ignorant people, but we deal with an ignorant people for a couple of reasons. One, people are not used to the spirit of the Lord moving in their house because we're in, we're in today's church. Uh, if you will, that is more concerned with performance, more concerned with entertainment than uh, the power of God and edifying the people of God. We have people who are ministering, who are pastoring and ministering, who don't even know the gifts of the Spirit. They just know that they saw one scripture, they had a good hoop, and they got into pastoring. It ain't even, it ain't, matter of fact, somebody voted for them, somebody elected them in there. It ain't even God's way. So, again, a lot of things are missed. A lot of concepts are missed because people are without understanding. You know, I'll never forget, uh, I'll never forget that I was with uh, Dr. Gertrude Stacks in Detroit, Michigan. And it was a service she was having. This was about maybe 10, 15 years ago. She was in service, and there was a move of God. And in the move of God, her, t- her, her, her ministers, she began going up in the tongues, and her ministers had everybody to hush. Here comes somebody out of, oh, my, your baby, doing all this extra stuff. And they said, shh, they had to hush. Because what? She was unlearned. And a lot of people be in their flesh. A lot of people want to be seen. Can I say <laughs> the other thing I want to say? The other problem is. You're dealing and 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 overseer. You gonna you gonna know this when I say it. We just when you get down to the nitty gritty and you and the rubber meets the road, you just dealing with a bunch of asses. Okay, I said what I had to say. I'm done. All right. Well, you know what? And let me throw something at you. And I I would say this, Apostle Smith. I think you were at this service. Remember Apostle Billy Wonders? Yes, sir. He came to the church we were at, and I was at at that particular time, and he shared a story uh, in relation to what you just said, Apostle Whitlow. And he said that they were having a service, and the spirit was high, and people were speaking in tongues and were going forth worshiping and praising God. And then it started to calm down and simmer down just a little bit. And he says, all of a sudden, some woman out the clear blue sky just broke out and said, Oh, he's Pastor Wonder said, no, honey, Jesus ain't coming in no Honda. <laughs> I just wanted to throw you out in relation to what you just said. But he was making, he, way back then, when they were lacking understanding, folk figured nobody knew anything. And those people who were slick, 
smooth and uh, crafty, I'll use that word as well, will sometimes try to put something over on the saints of God, over on the sheep, because they figure everybody's asleep and nobody's paying attention. But God always has mm-hmm. a watchman on the wall. So with those yes. of you listening to radio, don't come to church thinking you're going to get one over on the saints. Ah, there's a lot more sharper knives in the drawer than you think. Okay. You better believe it. Now, 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 this this unknown tongue, because that that's uh-huh. something we really need to get to here. Let let's read some more. Okay, I'm gonna switch over to the amplified uh, verse 17 because I think this will give us a nice clarity to everything we've said to this point. Verse 17 from the amplified says, "You are giving thanks well enough in a way that God is glorified, but the other person." who does not understand you, is not edified and spiritually strengthened since he cannot join in in your thanksgiving. We just got finished talking about that. Yep. Go ahead. Continue. Okay, verse 18. I thank God that I speak in unknown tongues more than all of you. Nevertheless, in public worship, I would rather say five understandable words in order to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue which others cannot understand. Hold it right there. Hold it right there. I'm going to say it, and I don't care who like it or lump it or whatever you want to do with it. Y'all need to sit these folks down who set it up speaking in tongues or supposed to be speaking in tongues, hold it up to service 10 to 15 minutes, and then there's no interpretation. Oh, mm-hmm. help us. And that's what help. the word I just talking about. Hey, Amen. Not just an unknown tongue, but when you set it up in the midst of the congregation and you call yourself speaking in tongues out loud like that, the Bible says, The only time you speak out like that in tongues is if you have a prophetic utterance for the body, which is called edification, something to build us up. If you don't have nothing that's going to build us up, will you please sit down and shut up? That's it. (laughs) Pretty simple. That's the bottom line. I was in in Bridgeport. Here in Connecticut, amen, preaching at a particular church. A young man jumped up. And he just went on and on, about 10 minutes. Nobody would say nothing. I jumped up. I said, young man. I said, young man. I said, what is the Lord saying? He couldn't tell you. No, no. He kept trying to make like he was so caught up that he couldn't hear me talking. He heard you. I said, young man, I said, you are not that lost in the spirit that you can't hear my voice. Uh Uh-oh. I said, (laughs) is the Lord saying something? He looked at me, uh, 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 no, I don't have no word from the Lord. I said, well, sit down. You're holding the service up. Mm-hmm. Uh, come on. I said, don't. And then I told him, I said, and I told him in a nice way, I said, and don't you ever do that again. Mm-hmm. Amen. We don't have time to sit here and listen that you go on and on, and God ain't got nothing for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I said, you're you're just wasting time. I said, I can see if the Lord were using you to talk to the full house. But you're going to stand up here for 10, 12 minutes going on and on and on, and you're going to tell me you don't have no word for the church. I said, that's out of Scripture. You're out of line. I said, you're out of order. Sure. I said, don't do it again. I said, you know, you've you been allowed to get away with it too much. I said, but not tonight. I'm here now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I said, don't do it ever again. If you don't have no word, 
Sit your hips in that seat and enjoy the service. Oh, so Father, and that's just sat, being real. That's just yeah, being real. When I got through talking and sat back down, the pastor leaned over to me and said, thank you. So mm. I just got to tell him in private. He said, well, you got him in the public tonight. He said, thank you. He well, said, he's been holding up. Say he's been holding up my service like that in several services. He ain't got nothing to say from God. I mean, it, it's I said, well, right. He's been warned on a couple of occasions that, you know, the scripture's plain and simple where it says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, what? Let every word let be every established. Word be established. He, so now yeah. if that's yeah. so before and he wouldn't listen in secret, now open rebuke. No that's choice. Right. That's no right. choice. Now our time, our time is swiftly, is swiftly running. Hey man, so let let me let let me just tap at a couple of things. Hey man, because I do want to mention a couple of things about moaning and groaning in the spirit. Uh, uh-huh. In the, in this in this fourteenth chapter, hey man, uh, that's Second Corinthians, right? First Corinthians. Uh, yeah. First, First Corinthians. Corinthians. It, 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 First. In, in this in this Second Corinthians fourteen, I need you to I need all of you, eight men listening into the broadcast. Please take time to read it, and ask God to give you a full understanding. But one of the verses there says that when you get through praying in the unknown tongue, mm-hmm. then you must pray. For the understanding. That's mm-hmm. right. After you get through praying in the unknown tongue, then the un- then there is a period after the unknown tongue where it now goes from a moment of the spirit man having a wonderful time in the heavens. Now it must become a prophetic word so that everybody is enlightened. Mm-hmm. And if it does not happen in that manner, the Bible says it should have never happened from the beginning. Yes. If you if you're not gonna pray for the interpretation and leave everybody in Wonderland, then you should have held your peace. Amen. Because when you pray the unknown tongue it edifies you, but it does nothing for those around you. So if you come out of your unknown tongue and your spirit has been lifted and then you don't lift everybody else's, really your time in unknown tongue has become a nuisance in the service. Amen. I didn't say God wasn't dealing with you, but it did turn into a nuisance because now, the rest of us are still unfruitful as to what God was doing. Amen. Yeah. So the Bible says that's why we must go into a quiet. And it really is not a quiet. If you look at that word silence or whatever it uses, it really says that the church goes into a meditation. Mm. Asking God, asking God, to make it plain unto the full body. Mm-hmm. Lord, All what right. were you just doing? What were you just saying? What is it that you're, that you're trying to get across to us that this person had to go straight into the heavenly first before they could see it? My goodness. Yeah. This is what the Bible teaches, that the unknown tongue blesses the person first. When they come down... Out of speaking between them and God, then there must be a meditation time amongst the saints that God will then use them or somebody mm-hmm. in the congregation to give an interpretation so that we all can rejoice on what God just did. Yeah. All right. Now, am I teaching Bible, brother, or am I just only mm-hmm. talking? No, you in the Word. See, because I'm tired, I'm so tired of a lot of foolishness that I see in church 
And I'm telling you, really, I had to ask the Lord to forgive me for many services that I've been in because really, uh, being Whitlow and some others, when we are in services and things are off as apostles, we're supposed to stop the service. Yeah. Yeah. We have been authorized by God to make sure things are in order. That's it. And if they don't want to receive, we will pray they should dismiss the service and go home. Mm-hmm. Amen. Because I'm That's tired. It. I'm tired. I'm tired of us having these services where it looks like we don't know a thing about what the scripture says on how to operate in the spirit. Okay. People out in the audience laying hands while the pastor preaching. Go sit yourself down. Oh, mm. come on. We ask, right. you, we ask you to read the scripture. Well, before I read the scripture, there's a word in my spirit. You ain't got out of no order. Word. We ask you to read no, the that's scripture. No, they're out of order. They're out of order. Way out of order. The Lord, if, the if, Lord told we ask you to bless the offering. The Lord told me there's five people that get sick. I need to lay hands on you. No, you about to be sick. God asked you to bless the offering, and now you're going to sit your happy self down. That's it. <laughs> really, All right. really what these scriptures are teaching tonight, because I, I got, we got to bring it to a close. I want to get this last piece in because I know our time is swiftly moving. Uh, uh, these scriptures tonight really teaches us that there are other portions of the flow of God that need to be returned back to the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. But it also shows us that there is an order in the things of God. Yes. One, one of these days, I want to teach on that scripture about ministering by course. All right. Mm-hmm. We don't know nothing about we act like we don't know nothing about that. But the Bible says we ought to be able to minister by course. I ought not to be ministering in a service while a pastor Whitlow is ministering. Uh-huh. And no, Elder, no, Elder no. Richard ought not to be ministering, amen, while he's ministering. The Bible says yeah. if Whitlow is the one with the mic, and he's ministering, let him do what he got to do, and then if he feel I got something, he can give me the mic, and then I go for it. Mm-hmm. That's the whole thing you ain't called. And then I can give help. Elder Rich the mic, and he can go for it. That's called ministry by court. Yeah. Amen. But if all of us are ministering at the same time, that's called confusion. It's, out, it's just straight out of order. Just straight out of order. But again, All right. I apostle, didn't mean to teach on that tonight. I didn't a, mean to teach apostle, on that tonight. That's not, that y'all apostle, got me too stirred up tonight. Yes, sir. The reality yes. is, the reality is, we're in a day and a time where people do not want order anymore. They're doing their own thing. They're comfortable doing their own thing, and they don't want no one to tell them that they're wrong for doing their own thing. That's just the reality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and for the handful that would even listen, it's for a moment, and then all of a sudden they go deaf. Mm-hmm. Wow, yeah, that's something to think of. But but I, I want and once again, I admonish all the listeners. Please go to that Second Corinthians chapter fourteen and read the rest of the verses. I mean, it's it's self-explanatory. It's self-explanatory when it talks about unknown tongues. I must say this tonight, though. Pastors, preachers, teachers, hate men that don't really know how to deal with a lesson on tongues, please stop mixing up all these different levels of tongues as one thing. Mm-hmm. They are not one thing. When you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, God gives you a language that can be developed 
into a prayer language. Yes. When you start talking about intercession, that is a ministry that is laid on a person in between a person's situation or a particular happening, amen, to go forth and bring them out. When you talk about unknown tongues, amen, the spirit man goes into the heavenly and receives a direct word and order mm-hmm. straight from the heavenly without any doing of the flesh. It does not require worship. It don't require a song. It don't require a scripture. Your spirit man just goes straight up in the heavenly. Amen. But when you are through speaking in the unknown tongue, you got to come back to earth and help us receive what God has said. Amen. Now the last part here is called moaning and groaning in the spirit. Mm-hmm. This is something that I have not heard dealt with in years. They used to teach us years ago when I was younger, they used to teach us to stay in prayer until you get into moaning and groaning. And I want you to understand two things about moaning and groaning. And then I'm going to let the brother say something about it, and we're going to come to a close very soon. Moaning and groaning in the spirit is two things. Either God is using you at that moment to bring something to birth, or either your spirit man is in warfare for you. Mm. Let me say it again. When you are moaning and groaning in the spirit, either your spirit man is bringing something to birth, or your spirit man is in a strong warfare for you. Mm. Go ahead, pick it up, brother. Go ahead, Apostle. Well, you, here, you, you again, you've made this so clear that you, you moaning, you're groaning, you're in a place where only God can take it. You're in a place where it's now beyond you. Here you are before God. You don't have no more words to say. You've got it before God. He's the only one who can take it because he's the only one who understands it. And you have to let him take it. You don't You don't sit there and try to hold on to it. You don't sit there and try to figure it out. No. You give it to the Lord and let him do it. Amen. That Amen. 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 And I'm I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to attack, attack or attach much more to that except for the fact that if God is birthing something in you, and I know we as men really have no real idea of what it's like to travail in birth as a woman does from a physical standpoint, but we get a good idea of what they go through from a spiritual standpoint because when God is birthing something in you, that birth, the birthing of that, that, that vision that he's given you coming forth, sometimes trying to push or should I say mm-hmm. pray until something happens in the spirit can cause you to moan and will cause you to groan. Now, if you are in warfare, I mean, it's, that's another thing that's hard to describe when you're in warfare and you're interceding for somebody else because that's, I've experienced that battle on a couple of occasions, and it's very uncomfortable. I can tell you that right now. It's a very uncomfortable position to be in when you're in battle, and really the battle is not yours. We know, everybody say the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about that moment when God is using you to bring somebody else through. That moaning mm-hmm. and groaning is extremely uncomfortable and can even cause you to sweat profusely 
Not that it's hot in the room or it's stuffy. You're just sweating. You, you, your physical body just sweats. And that's all. That's the only way I can describe it because that's what I remember. Mm. I'm so, sorry. So we, see, so, so we see that these three, these three elements of prayer are really what we name them for this lesson. They uh-huh. are secret weapons. Mm-hmm. They are that can really break through the enemy's camp. They can break through sound barriers. They can break through distance, miles, uh, you know, country, whatever. This is the secret warfare weapon that God has given us, amen, and it's called prayer. Yes. Yes. We talked about it in three different facets tonight. But in each facet, it is so powerful, each one of them, until they, it, it, it may be hungry for prayer. Amen. And it may be want to get in each level <laughs> and say, Lord, just have your way. Amen. Do it again in me, Lord. Yeah. And I admonish all listeners that have not been in prayer uh, uh, for a while. I'm talking about to, to those of you that are saved and sanctified and the Holy Ghost feel. If you if you used to be an intercessor, the gift is not go- gone. It's just lying dormant. Stir it up. Amen. If you are one that is known to go in unknown tongues and it has not happened in a while, it ain't gone. Stir it up. Amen. That's if you get. just the morning brought in the spirit and you haven't done it in a while, stir it up. Stir it up. The enemy wants you to stop because it brings great victory amongst the people of God. Mm-hmm. And when you don't do it, that means somebody is not gaining the victory. I admonish you tonight, get that in your place. Amen. Amen. And watch God begin to do great things. Amen. Yes. Amen. Tonight, Apostle, I would that you would pray, amen, in these three areas. Pray in these three areas that it will, that it will become a blaze again in the body of Christ. And then, Elder Rich, I want you to give an invitation of salvation. Amen. And then I will do the closing. Amen. Amen. Gracious Father, in the matchless name of Jesus, we lift you up and we bless you for this time that you've allowed us to share in your word. Now, Father, as I come before you, I stand in the midst of people who are lost without you. I stand in the midst of people whose gift has become dormant. I stand in the midst of people who need to be stirred in their spirit, oh God, that we will get on fire for you and go back to seeking you in prayer and in fasting and in intercession. Feeding, oh God, and in crying out to you, and then speaking in our heavenly language to you, God, like only you can do. Stir us, God, with your fire. Stir us with your spirit, oh God, until we begin to war in the spirit and operate accordingly so that, Lord, lives are changed, so that people will do what you call them to do and be what you call them to be and do it with boldness. God, we pray that you would do the supernatural. Do it quick, fast, in a hurry, that we're not lost, that we don't miss you. Oh, in the name of Jesus, rebuke every devourer that tries to keep us from what you've called us to. In the name of Jesus, God, we trust yes. you and we thank you because you said whatever we ask in your name, you would do it. We receive it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. 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 You have heard tonight uh, 
rendition of Prayer, the Secret Weapon. Perhaps you're one who does not have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, and you must ask yourself this question. If you were called home, if you died and left the face of this earth tonight, where would your spirit spend eternity? Where would your spirit rest? And there are only two places, whether you believe it or not. Either you'll be in the bosom of the Lord and you'll rest in heaven because you've already surrendered your life to Jesus, or you'll, your eyes are open up in hell. That's where you'll lift up your eyes. I've got some good news for you. Here is some good news, and it's real simple. I want to call it the ABCs of salvation. If you, A, acknowledge the fact that you are a sinner and you need a Savior, God, through his Son, Jesus Christ, is waiting to receive and to accept you and to partner with you and to teach you how to walk this walk called salvation on your way to a life of holiness. B, mm. all you have to believe that Jesus Christ came, suffered, bled, died on that horrible cross for your sins and then rose on the third day with all power in his hand. And then C, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Those are the ABCs of salvation. Real simple. The Bible says 10, 8 through 12, and I'm not going to go through the whole thing. It says, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, that word of truth which we speak. That if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord, believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It is that simple. If you're willing to give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ today, please pray this simple prayer with me. Say, dear God, I humbly come before you. I recognize that if I left this earth right here and right now in hell, I'd lift up my eyes. I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die for my sins. I believe that if I accept him as Lord of my life, that you would receive me as one of yours. And because I believe it, I confess with my mouth here and now. Save me, Lord. Redeem me. Bring me back to the Bring me back to your family. I ask you to do this in Jesus' name. Right now, I confess with my mouth, because I believe in my heart, that I am saved. If you prayed that prayer, reach out to us on Elation Magazine or on the Pastor's Corner and let us know. Give us your testimony so we can acknowledge it and let people know of the great things that God is doing in your life. We look forward to seeing you again. Turn it into the hands of Chief Apostle Vincent L. Smith for the final set and benediction. Amen. Amen. Well, my brothers, I thank you tonight, amen, for being faithful to the voice and this broadcast as we go over the air in so many different areas, amen, and we bless God for your input, for your knowledge, amen, and your walk with God, amen, we, uh, i like to say we thank God for you, Apostle Whitlow, amen, Elder sure. Bishop, we thank God for you, amen, uh, Kenny Kim, you, you sweet lady, we thank you, amen, for being Amen. Attentive with us and for us to every caller. We love you, even with your silence. We pray that the lesson bless you on tonight. We're not worried about you being silent, but I do want to know that you have been blessed by the word of God. Amen. And next week, as I said, will be the first Tuesday in March. So whatever you're not getting done for God, you better hurry up and get moving because we'll be three months in when we come back again. Time is not waiting for you. And as I often say, going off the air, if you're catching hell, don't hold it. If you're going through hell, don't stop. But go ahead, go ahead, Go ahead. God has greater things in store for you. The Lord bless you. Let it rip.